Hello and welcome. My name is Adam Velengao and today I am going to review Optos Silverstone. Optoses are well known for the ability to image even the peripheral retina with a single shot. But Silverstone has a swept source OCT that enables you to scan the peripheral retina as well. Please stay with me and watch the review of Optos Silverstone. This is the mighty Optos Silverstone. Not much is changed compared to California except for the label. Here you have the sticker with the Optomap with two OCT scans. So this is one sign and on the other side you have a name uh, Silverstone Swept Source OCT. The tablet is also much larger and it's nicely mounted on an arm, so you can position it depending on your height, on your preferences. On the back side, you have the switch off, switch on. That one is used for permanent turning off. And on the front side, you have the colored green, blue, uh, one that's used for uh, turning on the machine. Here is the cap, it's very useful. We didn't have it on the uh, first California because uh, the machine catches this, this mirror, catches a lot of uh, dust, as you can see, it definitely requires cleaning. Table is nicely designed because you have the armrest for the die-based uh, modalities, but it's also um, really wheelchair accessible. So even patients with the automatic wheelchairs can get into the machine and you can uh, use this machine for wheelchairs. And then you have the all-in-one controller. So you take the images, you position the uh, chin rest, you also can use the um, focus and Seagate using one controller uh, without touching the uh, tablet. So it's also quite uh, remarkably simple. There is no mouse, no external keyboard, everything is done on the tablet. So here you can search for the existing patient in case you've done uh, multiple uh, visits or in cases of new patient, you just put the, uh, the names and the date and the uh, patient ID into the machine. And then you hit to capture in order to capture the images. With Silverstone, you have following modalities. You can have OCT, Optomap, multi-mode, that's basically something like protocol, and then you have the angiography, whether it's the ICG or the FA, it also comes down to this uh, section. The patient is not dilated, the room is dark, so you can see uh, how you can actually use this machine without dilation. The patient is young though, so naturally it's not going to be the same for all diabetic patients, but this is how you take the image. We are going to start with the AF, um, then we can move to the red green, and here we are. Without dilation, uh, you still get 200 degrees, not, not a problem uh, for this machine. And this is all about the OCT. So this is the raster. Um, raster is only possible within the, let's say, paramacular region. But if you change it to volume scan, you can put it wherever you want. Uh, in far periphery, which we are going to see right now, and you just hit the uh, start button. You have the optimizing for OCT capture, uh, autofocus um, and uh, automatic Seagate positioning that works fairly nice. You can also redo it, as I'm going to show you later, and then you hit the uh, start button and you have the acquisition ready. After which you can accept or discard it. The same applies to line scans, you can also place them wherever you want. But naturally with light scans, the same problem applies. You need to be very um, well experienced, know exactly where you are going to, to see it. All the lesion has to be very big. For this particular reason, I mostly use volume scans because it's most easy to picture a lesion. Um, if you cannot get uh, an automatic uh, adjustment of your OCT, you can as well use the manual function and in that way you are going to use the remote controller. As you can see my remote here, you can change the Seagate and you can also change the focus. So now I'm changing focus and right now I can change the uh, Seagate uh, by using this uh, plus or minus used for chin rest. And after you've done with the taking photos, you can view the OCT using this play button and in that way you get the 
all the information and then again discard or accept. Multi-mode is basically a protocol so you have red green, AF and then you have the raster. Furthermore you have the ultra wide field extended line, very wide field scans and if you're unhappy with the uh, auto uh, optimization you can do redo it or you can redo a specific part whether it's the focus whether it's the depth or location you can also picture the optic nerve head as an OCT yet you shouldn't expect any RNFL or GCO measurement in this machine a new feature that was really lacking in the previous version of Optus is, is the ability to change the fixation. So you can have the superior nasal inferior tem temporal fixation and then uh, the patient gazes into the change fixation and you can uh, get high resolution images, um, wide field, but also in the far periphery uh, than you are usually accustomed to. And again, this patient doesn't have dilation, as you can see, and still you're able to get a very nice images. After you took the image, you can change the laterality automatically or you can discard the image. A feature that I really wished it was present on our previous California is the ability to enlarge the images on the tablet, because sometimes you you didn't see the patient, you just took the Optus image and you see there is some lesion, you're not sure what it is. Um, on the smaller tablet, it was especially quite difficult to see the lesion. Uh, so you needed to switch it off, uh, look at the computer, then go back to Optus. Uh, right now you can do it. You can see particular lesion, uh, enlarge it, and then put the OCT on the exact point you want. Um, you can uh, select multiple visits. You can change the lateralities if you've done this. You can also delete multiple visits. So it's all doable here from this. This is the patient directory. You can have patient name, performed patient ID, date of birth, and then also image type. And you can search for um, different modalities. You can actually search for number of images. Um, so if you have plenty of images, that's probably going to be interesting in geography. Um, you can narrow searches uh, and also sort based on uh, latest or the oldest one. This is Optos Advanced. It's web-based system. And if you can compare it to Zeiss Forum, the first thing, it is very clear. Firstly, because you have icons on the toolbar and then you have subtitles. And when you click the icon, you mostly have some sort of a sub menu. This is much easier to use for the first time than the standard Windows based little script on a toolbar. Next thing you need to understand is the difference between layout and view. So study layout is basically how the interface is going to look. Uh, if you have multiple modalities, you want to put them, you are going to use layout. View is different. View is for one eye, one modality. And uh, if you have multiple images, so if you have fluorescent geography and you want to see multiple fluorescent geography images, you are going to use view, right? So you are going to have all the um, images there. So now it's clear that view is about particular image. So we can modify the channels, you can make the 3D. You can also, if you have the OCT, you can have the Explorer, you can have radial scan here, you can have the SLO reference um, type of image in that case. Then you have the hanging protocol. So this is by default in our center. It's the fundus photo, autofluorescence and angiography. You can actually change that. And then if you want to uh, switch between the protocols, so you just click next or previous and, and by default, you'll move into your favorite uh, modality that you want to have as a next. You can always uh, reset the images and then you get the uh, all your annotations, everything that was done is going to be uh, reset. As you can see with the hanging protocols, there are also multiple ways you can view the images, you can have uh, multiple adjustable functions. Um, and then you have the OCT, something that's uh, for useful for uh, Silverstone user or um, Monaco users. Uh, so uh, this is the interesting feature because uh, as you might have seen, there's no radial scans, 
but the machine can make some sort of um, virtual radial scans based on the raster scans. But you can see that they are slightly distorted and there are also problems with the segmentation if the scan is coming from two different rasters, like here. Another interesting feature that Optos Advance has is the Smart Zoom. So you can use this uh, feature to obviously just enlarge part of the image, but I doubt it's really useful for that particular reason. Uh, what's more interesting is you can superimpose here different modality on different. And for that, I can imagine this is more, more useful than you can change the opacity. Um, I rarely do it. I mostly use just the one side, uh, color fundus, then autofluorescence or um, FA, no, it's not linked. Um, or conversely, you can use the protocols, just skip between the images. Um, this is what I mostly use uh, without really going to the smart zoom feature. Right now, Optos can also make mosaics, as you can imagine, as I showed you that you can change the fixation, you can also have the mosaic. You can use automatic filters, um, digital filters. So you can have either a red free or a green free. And these are mostly useful for Nevis, right? Because it shows you whether it's something that's underneath the RPE or whether something is uh, about, within the neurosensory retina. But we are going to talk about the OCT in far periphery. And this is what you can get. So you can get really um, like 100% assurance that this is uh, tractional retinal detachment, at least partially, and also retinal hole. Optus has great fluorescent geography. It doesn't have movie uh, for angiography, uh, but you can still use the fluorescent geography to do things like focal laser very, very much, as you can see in that patient. There are two things for Optos. One is just, you know, like peripheral imaging. So uh, Fundus Photo and then another one is the Silverstone. What Silverstone adds to the table. Uh, so let's just quickly summarize the Optos capability. I've did some uh, comparison between Optos and Adon, so you can watch it. Uh, but uh, just briefly, Optos is a king of peripheral imaging because it allows you 200 degrees single shot, 240 degrees in mosaic. So this is the furthest reaching platform on the market. Nobody else does that. It does this slightly by sacrificing the resolution of the macula. So if you uh, want to get nice images of macula, please don't use Optos. This is a laser technology. So on the one hand, you get amazing autofluorescence. You get an amazing uh, fluorescence in geography because everything is super sharp. Uh, you don't have any distortion. But on the other side, uh, at least with Optos Silverstone, you have two lasers, red and green, and you can see that the colors are distorted, right? This is not a regular slit lamp color of the uh, retina. This is distorted. Uh, the new California has the third channel, the blue channel. Uh, probably uh, Silverstone will have that as well. But obviously we are going to talk about the OCT uh, as this machine really offers you something that no other OCT can offer. So ultra wide field OCT, uh, that's SLO based, right? So you see what you're taking, you see exactly where the patient has the lesion. And this system is extremely easy to use because the argument is, yes, you can do the same on other OCTs. I mean, if you have an SLO based system, it's going to be much easier. I tried to do it on Plex Elite. This is the swept source wide field OCT from Zeiss, but it's difficult and it requires uh, cooperation from the patient side and a lot of time. Here, it's extremely easy. Uh, it's extremely fast. What are the downsides of Optos Silverstone? Well, firstly, this is extremely expensive. The price is just mind boggling. The thing is, you can actually buy a CT scanner for this. I mean, sure, for CT, you also need a special room and you need a station and you need a powerful computer. So just a CT scanner is not very really fair. But yes, for the sake of argument, you can buy a CT scanner and still have some, some money to spare for a Optos Silverstone. So Optos Silverstone is the most expensive machine that we have in our center. But... 
it's the first of its kind. So it's the first real ultra wide field OCT that can reach into far periphery. The same was true for California in that regard that California was the first fluorescent in geography and also uh, fundoscopy that was able to reach into far periphery. Thanks to Optos California, we started to see how important periphery is, right? And then there was the market demand for that kind of fundus cameras. And uh, you have Adon, you have uh, Clarus that can reach into periphery because people saw how important it is. And then you had the uh, market, uh, the companies delivered that um, to this demand. The, the thing with uh, Silverstone, a similar thing can happen, right? Right now we will see how important um, doing uh, OCT in the periphery is and then suddenly uh, size or uh, center view will come up with machines that will be able to do uh, the same and naturally uh, Silverstone will then be cheaper. Uh, you can ask yourself who this machine is for. Well, I would say firstly it is for um, academic centers like ours, right? So um, if you have residents, if you have uh, doctors uh, coming to you for internship or for observerships, this machine allows you to clearly see whether you have an RD or whether it's a schizis or whether it's just a dense vitreous. When I was training as a resident, the only way I could confirm my diagnosis was asking somebody older, more experienced, hey, can you take a look and tell me whether it's a schizis or whether it's an RD, which was, you know, like sometimes uh, quite difficult. Right now, residents in our center can just take the patient, uh, Get the, get the imaging, uh, get the final diagnosis of the OCD, so, which, is, which is, I believe, a, a very a good thing for uh, education purpose. Uh, secondly, uh, the addition of uh, OCT in combination with fluorescein and geography also helps them to understand how different patterns in fluorescein and geography appear because they can correlate this with OCT. So it's yet another um, example of how useful uh, multimodal imaging in ophthalmology is. I can also imagine that people who have very premium practices, they earn a lot for an hourly wage and for them having a Silverstone uh, means that they don't have to do uh, a very thorough um, fundoscopy and then take the patient to get the ultrasounds. For them, uh, getting just a photo plus uh, an OCT with the final diagnosis of a, a retinal issue uh, might also be beneficial from financial point of view. Another issue is that it requires more time to position the patient. It's not like a traditional fundus camera and most patients are just trying to squeeze their nose through the hole uh, rather than, you know, like, uh, trying to look into this with one eye, I usually say, hey, just pretend you're looking for a keyhole and uh, then, you know, like positioning the patient, they, they had younger patients, it's much easier uh, for older patients, it takes some time. And this also is a problematic if you do fluorescein geography and you want to get, let's say, early phases um, of both eyes. This is not going to happen here, right? Just forget about early phases of the contralateral eye on Optos. You can do it with, if you're very fast on traditional fundus camera with a joystick here, um, you know, like you'll waste some time positioning the patient. Another drawback of this machine is that it is unable to produce the macular thickness and RNFL thickness. So naturally, if you can afford Silverstone, yes, you can also afford presumably, and standalone OCT, but this is an important point. This is not just a regular OCT that you can use in your clinic. It's just for imaging, not for quantification. To summarize, Optos Silverstone is an astonishing device that offers you ultra-wide field multimodal imaging together with the OCT. Thank you very much for watching my review. I hope you've enjoyed. Please subscribe and goodbye.